Okay, I see Connie, you're first in the room today. Hey, everybody. Hey, hey, hey. Let's see. It is Wednesday, May 26. And, you know, I was thinking about this past year, this morning, and it's like super blink. I mean, super blink. And it's over. Oh, shoot. I forgot my notes. I'll be right back. Well, better yet, I can't find my notes. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Oh, let's hold a light little candle that I get everything right. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> I got a lot to cover today, a whole lot. Um, first of all, you might want to grab your calendar and your um, a, a pencil. Oh, here they are, right under my calendar. Because things are going to get really flaky in June. Yeah, we're good. John came in. It's like, I'll pay you a quarter if you can find something for me. <laughs> uh, so here we go. All right. First of all, uh, is that a future quilt? Oh, the flower on the thing. No, we did that way back. I think you're talking about, let me see if I can do a weatherman thing. That right there. No, we did that already. I, I loved that fabric line. So I don't know, stuff just kind of, sometimes my design wall ends up being my filing cabinet, okay? Got a lot to go over today. Again, June is going to be really flaky, so I would like you to have a calendar if you're at all interested in keeping track of what's going on when. And I will give you my very best guess in the whole thing. Okay, I actually made this cover in a Libby Williamson class in Napa. So fun. It was like she took paper and then put stuff on it and she let us have at it. If you ever take a class by Libby Williamson, I cannot recommend it enough. So today's newsletter had an interesting um, article by Barbara Black in it. And it is your last will and testament when it comes to your, sew uh, your, your, your craft, your art, your, your fabric, your sewing machines and all that. And I mean, it, I guess it's stuff that kind of you might innately know, but I'll tell you right now, it's something you want to for sure um, think about so that when you are gone, you know, nothing goes on forever, everything gets handled properly. In fact, my friend Wendy Grand and I are kind of in charge of each other's sewing room. Now, John has a better clue of what is going on in here than probably a lot of spouses or partners or whatever, but just make sure so take a, you know, take a little read on that. And I just commission you to do that. Uh, speaking of um, rooms, I am still in utter chaos. And as we go, you'll start seeing stuff. I have to get the stuff from the guest bedroom now and get it in here. And I'm waiting for my build-ins to be built. In fact, one is done. And when this I'm done today, um, Bill's coming over so we can get the second one done. And it, it's so funny because I remember this when we built this room. I angst, angst, angst over the hardware. And if any of you have remodeled a kitchen or anything like that, you know you can drop a bundle. I had said in my brain that I wasn't going to care about the hardware until I saw these on Etsy. Look at these. They're just gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. They're made by uh, Naples Glasswork. And, and <laughs> I told a dare, talk about last will and testament. Listen, <laughs> I'm spending a bundle on these, an absolute bundle, but aren't they gorgeous? So again, that's Naples Glassworks, okay? And the gal is just as sweet as can be. I got to to see how they would work on the big doors because they are big. Oh, they look beautiful. Of course they do. All right. So today, oh, I want to talk about Helen. Uh, I 
thought I had this up Friday for you. Oh, wait, what's today? Wednesday, Monday for you to see this. And this is what she was doing. She, we were talking about doing black and white. And I love how she can get on her um, uh, uh, QE or EQ, EQ, electric quilt, and fiddle with these things. So yay for that. Uh, also, what is this I'm going to show you? Oh, right now we have a promotion going for Oak Shots. And if you go to the shop and you see this big old picture right here, all right, the next thing you're going to do is this. You're going to then click it and you will see that we have this one special bundle to the left. It's excellent price, $64, normally $39.99. And um, then other oak shots. And, and you can see the middle one has sold out already. But make sure, you know, you take a look-see. This is what I couldn't find the other day. And then I'm undoing um, the guest bedroom, getting my stuff back in here. This is not available. <laughs> <laughs> this is some promotion they put out a while back, and I just had to have it. And also, with that, I can't cut into it. I can't do it. It's killing me. But the fabric is just absolutely beautiful, and the big boss just came in. Oh, no, she couldn't get it. Yeah, he's him whispering things. We were trying to get an interview with the guy that um, owns the company, and I think he's vacation this week or something, and maybe down the road we'll do it, but these oak shots are really quite extraordinary, so you might want to take advantage of that. Okie doke. So then let's Cindy Needham. Today is Cindy Needham Day, and why, why I am so... In Let's take a look-see, and I will get you familiar really fast. Okay, this is machine quilted, and Cindy, I mean, she just knows how to do it. And if you're like me, and you're stepping into the whole thing, and you're like, going, oh, I don't even know where to start. Um, we did do a show with her 2408 on the little girls, but... Um, what we're going to see today is a little video on how she does fills and stuff like that. But okay, let's take another look. What do I mean by fills? If you look at the bottom left-hand side, um, that starts out with triangles, and then she does little um, cathedral windows, and then there are little itty-bitty beads. You can see where they all come together. Absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous stuff. Look at that. And she has created stencils for this. And that, and so I asked her when I was there last week if she could walk us through that pretty please. And look at the upper one. Those are um, clams that she has filled in. So she starts, so that they look like ginkgo leaves. So she starts like with bones. And then what can you do to those bones to change them? In 2016, she had a exhibit at Houston, and it was called For the Love of Linen, Linens, and I believe TQS sponsored it, and not I believe, I know we did, and she did something that just blew everybody's mind. She wanted to have a petting zoo. Well, you don't, if you touch the quilts at Houston, they're going to chop your arm off, so she really had to fight for this, and you could get in there and touch, touch, touch her beautiful, beautiful work. And that was 2016. When I first looked at this, I went, 2010? No, it couldn't be. And then I realized that was a six there. So Cindy's work, I mean, this woman has chops like there's no tomorrow. Um, what I'd like to do is take a little look at the interview that I did. And my guess is you'll be watching this a couple times. I, I know every time I take from her, I learn more and more. And honestly, I have been studying quilting design for 40 years, okay? So, yay, take it away, Miss Cindy Needham. I am so thrilled that Cindy agreed to doing another video with us because I'm here sewing. I'm working on not a little girl, but I was supposed to be a teenager, and now it's turning into a young married. <laughs> but, <laughs> 
<laughs> Anyways, I asked Cindy if she would be so kind is to talk more about fills because she has a really cool system. And well, let me just quit yakking and let me turn this around. All right. Uh, when I teach my design class and my feathers and backgrounds, I'm always talking about how important the fills are. And it's something that a lot of people go, ah, but it's so much work, but it makes such a huge difference. So Alex asked if I could do a quick little lecture on some of my background fills, and I went, absolutely. So I pulled out, pulled out some quick examples for you. I'm going to show you how you can use what you have at home, how to quickly fill simple things. And we're good, so it's gonna be a little bit of a drawing session type thing. Okay, I'm gonna snuggle up behind you. Sounds good. Okay, good. All right. Okay, not an infomercial, but I do have my ultimate background set, and I've got, oh gosh, six different designs, three sizes each, and they're very basic. So we're gonna be talking about some of those in the lecture that I'm gonna show you. So your backgrounds provide your shadow. In order to get sunshine in your quilt, which is the part that catches the light, you have to have something behind it that's gonna create texture and shadow. So this sample shows your primary design, a background fill, and it's okay, but it's nothing special. It's all the same value. But as I go through and I start adding fill, you can use a blending thread, you can use a contrasting thread, and you can see as we go around the difference that the background fill is, have made in that sample. So I'm gonna move my light because that didn't show up very well. That's pretty good. Okay, good, awesome. So here's the real deal, and I love the fact how it shows off the sunshine and shadow and being able to play with some of the threads because the thread choice is so important. Oh, speaking of thread, I use a thin thread for my backgrounds, mostly kimono silk or <laughs> micro quilter. They're both from Superior Threads. Good. Okay, so we're done with that one. And Three basic fills that I use in every single quilt I do are freeform feathers, repetitive straight-ish lines, and pebbles and bubbles. And you can beautifully quilt any quilt with just those three. So we had to pull Ricky in. Here's an old convergence quilt. Is that showing up? Mm -hmm. Oh, good. And it was quilted with kimono silk and it's repetitive straightish lines and bubbles only. It's beautiful. And it still worked mm -hmm. with just using those two simple things. And this is another sample showing how I quilted a basic pieced block. I've got freeform feathers, repetitive lines, and pebbles and bubbles. And it looks fabulous. Okay, repetitive lines also includes triple lines and babies, mamas, and papas in the backgrounds. So that's, this is a baby we're looking at? Yeah, right there. Okay, okay. there's papa, mama, and baby. Okay. You don't have to have the stencils. You can do it with your ruler. Cindy, how do you decide what to put where as far as baby, papa, or whatever? The space that I need to fill. Okay. If I've got like our little girls and teenagers, mm -hmm. I'm in the babies. Okay. But if I have a larger space, then I'm in the papas okay. and mamas. Cool. Okay. And so you can do the repetitive lines vertical. I've got a diagonal line cut through the stencil. So if you flip it, lay it down horizontal, you can get it going at an angle. Flip it again, and you can get a grid. So here's wow. a triple line grid. And then if you're crazy about detail, you can go in and fill all those little squares. I don't know anybody like that. <laughs> <laughs> and then I did a really cool thing. I showed this on my quilt show episode mm -hmm. with the little girls. Is I love doing these triangles for a border. And then I added my baby triple lines. I love how that come out. I want to do that one again, but it was a beautiful texture. So you can use those, not just for backgrounds, you can use them for borders if you want. 
grids. Huge background, classic. The set comes with a three quarter grid and a half inch grid. These are smaller, but if you mark every single line, you get a half inch grid. So I've got my half inch, and if I skip a line, then I'll have a one inch grid, skip two lines, inch and a half. So you can get any size you want. I recommend when you mark a grid, take it and turn it diagonally at a 45. Don't do grid work straight up and down. It eases the fabric in better and it looks better, especially if you have creative piecing. So you can lay that stencil down in the middle of your piece, mark four or five lines. That's all you have to mark. Then we're gonna go down here, take your ruler, line it up to those perfectly marked lines and extend them out as far as you want. That way you get a half inch grid or whatever in all four corners. So a regular grid, it's gonna look like that. And then you can take it a step further. <gasps> Oops, sorry, thread. And I call this double grid and you can half it again. Beautiful texture. And these are, I'll give a shout out, these are on cherry wood. Go to their website with your check, your credit card. With your credit <laughs> Yeah, love cherry wood. I like to give them a good shout out. And this They is are also, the best. Yeah. yeah. And so these, this is your double grid. I had the half inch grid in there and it wasn't enough shadow, so I halved it again. And you get a real pretty detail in there. Beautiful. And while you're here, I don't know if you can see, we're going to be talking about clams in a minute. Okay, let me get down here. I'm like right in your face. Yeah. I'm so sorry. No, that's okay. Okay. But I've got baby clams in there. Okay. So that makes a good filler. Okay, scooting along. Okay, then you can take and fill your grid work with repetitive lines. You can get a basket weave. You can do it ribbon candy. You can do anything with hey, the grid. So, Cindy, um, like up in this area here, uh -huh. when you go down, do you just like stitch over or do you finish each time? <laughs> um, you mean when I'm coming here? Yeah. You stitch over. Why do you laugh at me? Because I tell people if they ask me that in class, mm -hmm. they say, well, if you annoy me, I'm going to tell you to stop and start every time. <laughs> You asked, so I need to tell you. Perfect. <laughs> so now you know. <laughs> I haven't done it to anybody yet. But. Okay. Okay. Perfect. All right. Okay. Secrets of being a teacher. <laughs> <laughs> Be good in class. <laughs> okay. Cathedral windows. Again, it's done with the grid. And I like the extra detail, so I stitch my grid first. I like that line. Then you can fill it. Let me bring my pointy finger up here. And I'll start in a corner. It's a three-step waltz. It's one, two, three, one, two, three, blah, blah, blah. Then when you get to the bottom, you go hokey, pokey, hokey, pokey, hokey, pokey. It's boring. So if you add a dance to it, it makes it more fun. And you can get a beautiful, I use this one a lot. This is beautiful. So my oh samples. Oh my goodness. Wow, everybody. Again, this is on cherry wood. I'm also demonstrating different weights of thread. So I used a heavier silk for the blue. I think that was like a 30 weight. Then I went to a 50, then I went to a 100. And this one is kind of a double sample. Wow. And so you can see that you can have empty windows and then you can start adding window treatments to it to add more detail. So it doesn't have to be fancy. And I don't know if you can get this where you're at. Where, we, where do you want me to go? Oh, cathedral windows. Oh, oh there it is. Okay. You see it? And filled that yeah. in. Nice. Okay. Oh, this was out of order. That's okay. This is live TV. Mm. Okay. So this was my repetitive grid. Nice. And this uh, wait, I'm going gonna, gonna to look really close. <laughs> oh, you and the are lines good. Are, the lines aren't straight. They're straight-ish. Okay. You get a better texture that way. Okay. Clams. We've got papas, mamas, and babies. And babies. I okay. love the babies. I do too. And when you mark your clams with a stencil, it's going to look like this. I recommend that you quilt your clam. Whoops, that bites in the way. 
quilt them from the bottom up and you want to kiss the head of the one underneath it De -da. travel on your spine or your seam and come back and do the next one and that's a basic clam okay so these are let me get this out of the way these are the little baby clams gosh they're so cute littles yeah and sorry table getting full. i'm sorry because i'm like right in your personal space okay <laughs> we're friends yeah <laughs> so this is showing empty clams these have little wispies hello we've got ginkgo clams and basket leaf clams wow. we have our assistant moving things thank you wendy <laughs> say hi hi, hi. <laughs> Then I wanted to show, I'm real quick here. I've got a 15 minute time. When I've got, I've already quilted my clams that I just showed you. Mm -hmm. I call these cathedral clams. Mm -hmm. You go back with the same thread or a different colored thread and you can add little arches. Oh, this is so good. Da 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 da, back and forth. And then this one, you're gonna quilt as you go. I found this one on Pinterest. As you are quilting your clams, Come down, you do the swirl, and back up. Isn't that cool? This is great for water. Dot. Then when you go back up to the top, gotta think about it. Travel on that and come. Are you seeing okay? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Are you seeing okay? Yeah, no. Okay. <laughs> you're doing a great so job. This is going this way, so your little swirls are gonna go in opposite directions. Wow. Okay. So cathedral clams and swirlies. Swirlies, isn't that cute? It's adorable. Love that one. I love Pinterest for inspiration. Quickly show you the basket weave. I included this because so many people ask about this one. And again, we've got, sorry, papas, mamas, and babies. Okay. When you mark it, it's going to look like this. This is an odd number design. So you're going to do one, go over, two, and my word for myself is and three. And then you can go one. I'm going to show you two different ways. One, two, three, four, five. When you have an odd number, you end up where you're supposed to be. Okay. And this will be one, two, three. And if you say, oh, heavens no, I'm not doing five lines. There's no way you can do one, <clears throat> two, and three. So when you're done with your line, and I'm keeping this short and quick, you're gonna travel down, two, three, two, and see this line seals that one. I love that you it. said earlier on, it's like you like the organic look. It does not have to look like it's a military salute. No. Yeah. I, mean, I have a lot of students say, oh my goodness, my lines aren't straight. And I go, it's a basket. Baskets are not perfect. That's and right. they're beautiful because of the texture. I wish I learned that lesson years ago. So is that showing up? Oh, oh good. look at that. And we got this one, the one you there's one on the diagonal and the other one is horizontal. Okay, and one more. Triangles and diamonds, and these aren't all the stencils in the set. I just pulled out sure. quick, easy ones. Uh, the triangles and diamonds, again, papas, mamas, and babies. I love this one. You quilt every line, you're getting triangles. Mm -hmm. You can fill it with repetitive lines. You can fill it with cathedral windows. If we take out lines, we can get into diamonds, but we're not gonna do that today. And this is my sample. Wow, wow, wow. No, it's helps. good, it's okay. good. So I used a heavy silk for the main lines, then I used kimono silk for the other fillers. And I use repetitive lines, cathedral windows, scribbling. So it's not complicated. Okay. I love how you break this stuff down. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Divide and conquer. Mm -hmm. Okay, and just a couple of quickies. The modern quilt block was donated 
I like to show that the backgrounds were used as, not as a background, but more of a texture. Love this one. And this was from a friend who donated a whole bunch of blocks to me. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I get good class samples out of them. <laughs> Join them together, and then I'm showing a sampler of a lot of the different backgrounds. Wow. Kind of on a modern technique. Now, um, you do retreats. You do... Yes. Uh, summer here, right where we're at right now, which is fabulous, especially with the food cart across the street and the bar, <laughs> or not the bar, the brewery. The brewery. Yeah. <laughs> and then you do retreats in the cloud. Yes. How does somebody uh, know what to do? If they, if they like, yeah, I want to do this. They go on my website. Okay. Everything's on my website, so it's all there. And it would probably be called what? My Time Quilting Retreat. Oh, I was going to say cindyneedham.com. No? Oh, I'm sorry. You're talking about the retreats. Yes, well, well, cindyneedham.com. Does that take you everywhere? Yes. Okay. Everything takes okay. you to the tools, the stencils, the retreats. Awesome. Everything. Yeah. And your beautiful, beautiful work. Thank you. And um, you guys, if you've not yet watched her latest show, was it in January or February? January. January. Uh, you need to watch it. And this is just like more, it's deeper information than what was presented in that time frame, yes. right? Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I'm going to go back and work on my Young Married piece. Cool. Okay. All right. Thank Thanks. you, Alex. Isn't she the best? I mean, I, I, I taped it. I've taken her several times. And then just now today, I heard something else and it registered. So you did ask some questions and let me address them if I can, please. Uh, yes, yeah, she works on a domestic juki. It, the juki has a little bit of a bigger um, base in there, but all it does is I think of, I, I don't know, I'm not going to say what jukis can do because I don't know, but, but there is a bigger space. In other words, she's not working on a long arm. She's not working. She's working on her domestic, okay? And especially when you're doing the little girls, that's fine. So what she does is, okay, now I'm getting into uh, dangerous territory, Yes, her talent is unbelievable. Um, this is what she does. <laughs> she uses her friction pen. She draws it on. This is not designed for fabric. And if you draw this, say, like on a cherry wood or some darker fabrics, and then you iron it and it goes away, um, it can leave ghost markings, all right? But... I'm doing it on my, on whites and things like that, but this is what she uses. Because like, let's say you're marking it and it gets goofed up. You can take your little wand iron and just erase it. Again, this is the Friction by um, Pilot. I believe we carry them in the store and um, they're not designed for fabric. So I use things like this very, very carefully. But in the case of my little girl and my newlywed quilt I'm working on, it, it has worked just great because I am working on white. Let's see, I got all these notes. Okay, um, she uses silk on top and I use silk on top, like that 100 weight silk. And then I use my 80 weight uh, quilter select on the bobbin because it's so fine. Now, here is another thing. If you don't have tire silk or silk, you could use my 80 weight on top and you would be fine. You just need a really fine thread, all right? She draws the lines, then she stitches. Okay, and then um, Carol... I don't know what you're, the question you're asking about under embroidery, and John came in and handed it to me too. I don't know what, you, what you're meaning. I'm thinking what you're thinking is that when you have beautiful feathers and exotic things like that, the more you quilt in the background, it, then it, it makes that the beautiful stuff pop up. All right, so I'm thinking that's what you're saying, but I, I think she only mentioned embroidery once, so I'm sorry I can't help you with that exactly. Okay, then as far as if you're interested in, I'm looking at all my notes here, um, if you're interested in getting her tools from us, uh, you can go, I'll show you how to find it, all right? You're gonna go to the shop. I'm in the shop right now. You can see that, and you can see I'm logged in. Then up 
in the search bar, I'm typing in Cindy Needham. I, once you understand our, our functionality here, it's great. And then you see that the tabs that go watch, learn, see, quilt, shop, quiltopedia, blog. Okay, if I want to watch her shows, I would go to the watch. But I want to shop her stuff. And so then I hit that shop tab, and then that all comes up. And what I wanted to show you that we have new in the shop, well, not so much this, this is her rip and grip which is fabulous. It's You can pick out um, when you mess up. Oh no, that never happens to any of us. You can use a seam ripper and then these great little um, tweezers. But what we just, when I went down there, up there to Chico, she has these little magnets and we have these in the shop too. Uh, get over there. And you can put this on the side of your sewing machine and then just throw that. Sparrow Kitty! She comes in and she starts screaming. She's deaf, deaf and I think maybe partially blind too. It's a very ugly, ugly thing when Sparrow comes in and starts screaming. So let me tell you what's going on, all right? It, it, um, this weekend, this weekend, two things are going on. First of all, we're going to have a Memorial Day sale and on special items. And Kristen is putting that together. Star members can shop on Friday. Basic members can shop on Saturday. And what is a star member? A star member is you pay 49 bucks a year and you have access to everything, all the shows, everything at thequiltshow.com. My guess is most of you are already star members. So get your Get, get on Friday and see what's there because we don't have an abundance. This is like we're going to be getting, you know, spot check here. In other words, we could run out of stuff, okay? But then the, but the other thing we're going to do for you is if you're not a star member, we're going to put the Cindy Needham show for free, the one on little girls. So that'll give you something to do this weekend, all right? But also, we've been waiting for the right time to do this. Finally, somebody is going to win a Cindy Needham little girl. And so I'm not quite sure this little this little girl exactly. You can pry it out of my hands and it's going to go to a new home. And what you we're also going to give away maybe four or five other prizes. So you're going to want to go and um, put your name in the pot, watch your newsletter. If you're not getting the newsletter, go look in your junk mail or, or yeah, whatever, but go check that out. So this weekend, we're going to take care of you. Somebody, somebody will win the little girl and a couple other prizes. Uh, Kristen's sweetening the pot. Star members can start shopping the sale on Friday and then non-stars on Saturday. We so appreciate you supporting us by subscribing to thequiltshow.com that we want to, not only do you have all the great shows and all that, but we give star members often heads up before the general public because it's only right. Okay, the, announce, the winner will be announced on Wednesday. Now, grab your calendar. Let me tell you what's going on. All right. Let me, I, I, I'm kind of just doing one day at a time. This Friday, today's Wednesday, right? We will talk about sewing on the borders. And that's just a matter of sewing on the borders. When do I sew them on before I applique? When do I not sew them on when I'm appliquing? I'm going to go through all that, all right? Then Monday is uh, Memorial Day. But I am going to teach, and we're going to do the vines. And I can't remember how I did the vines. I've got to backtrack and see because it's that woven fabric. It got kind of funky on me, so I've got to remember. I might be calling you Barbara Black on how I did that. And then on June, June 2nd, we will do a little primer refresher on prepared applique. And that then I'm going to be gone. I'm taking off to Wisconsin to get mom back to where she belongs, and I will be back on the 14th of June, all right? But that'll give you time to get the applique prepared, get the vines on, get all of that ready to go. Now, that's what I'm doing. 
Barbara Black on June the 4th will do a Color My World installment, all right? And then I'm not quite sure what Dee's thing is. I know she's off this Saturday. Again, she too is in the middle of moving. We, we have so many moving targets right now. It, it's hard to even wrap my brain around it. I, I looked at my calendar and almost started crying, but when I sat down and focused, I got it. <laughs> So, so uh, forgive us that life is getting in the way, but we're not leaving you. I just need you to have it on your calendar, okay? Okay, I would love to see, it's been a long time, Cindy fan, Carol, thank you, Jackie. She didn't explain that very well in the show. It was the latest show, and she did on the quilt shop. Okay, I don't know what's going on, but it looks like Carol and Jackie took care of business there. So I thought today... Oh, I, okay, Jackie just said about going under. I think it means that the design appears to go under the embroidery. She stops at the embroidery, but the design continues on the other side of the embroidery as if the design went under. Yes, and that's also how she does when she has the big motifs and then does the background stuff behind it. It's all in layers, so to speak. So what's happening today? Okay, I got to continue moving stuff out of the extra bedroom because the kids are coming. Bill Daring's coming over to talk about the top of my, the one bookshelf area. And I just feel so blessed to be with you guys and so grateful that we have this time together and that you choose it to spend with me. I get it. It's a big commitment. Thank you so much. And have a, have a great day. And I'm going to go out to lunch with a high school girlfriend today that I only see once a year. It's been two years because of COVID. So I'm very excited about that. Have a wonderful day and we'll see you Friday.